Hey everyone, today we're going to create a brand new Azure function app and we're going to publish it to Azure all from within Visual Studio in minutes. So let's just jump into it. So we're going to start by creating a new project. We're going to pick the Azure functions one, which is there if you've got the Azure development package installed. Project name, let's just call it test Rowan. We're going to leave all this stuff default for now, but make note that we've got the HTTP trigger here. That's the entryway to our function. Okay, now this is the code that it gives us by default. We've got our function name. That's how we're going to refer to our function, particularly when we use the HTTP call to it. Um, so this is the HTTP trigger telling us the entry point to our function. We've got authorization level, which you don't need to pay attention to right now. We've got get and post. These are the methods that the function accepts, the web request types. There's no extra routing we're using, although it will use the function name in the root because we're using a HTTP trigger. Uh, this is the request where we're going to get the information from, and then it's just injecting a logger. So the first line is just the information it's uh, going to log. Here, it's looking for the name in the query that we send up. So the parameter we give it is going to be name. We get the body, which is the content we're trying to send up. And in this case, it's going to deserialize it to a name. And then the response message is going to use that name, and we're just going to return it in this. And that's our whole function. So if I just hit test up here locally, Okay, now it's running locally, and here is the address. So we're going to take that, and we're going to put it in here. And there we go. This is our function app running. This is the response you get when you have to pass a name in, and we'll just do name equals Rowan. There we go. So let's push this up to Azure. So we're going to stop this, and we're going to go over here and right-click on the project name and click on Publish. Now we're going to select Azure, Azure Function App Windows for now. So we're going to click on Create a New Instance. And the top one here is the name of our Function App, as it looks like on Azure. Let's just get rid of that. Let's just call it Test Row an Example. The Resource Group, we can change to the one I've made. Everything else I'm going to leave the same for now. You don't really want it running in Australia normally. But I think because I've been creating and deleting so many Function Apps, practicing for this and trying some other stuff out, it's not letting me create one anywhere other than Australia at the moment. So let's just hit go on that. After you click create, it's going to take a couple of minutes just to provision all of the resources in Azure. And now that's finished, close that. It just takes us to here. So what that's done is it's provisioned the resources, the Azure functions application, storage, the app insights, all the other stuff that needs to run. But it hasn't actually got the app running itself. So we just need to hit publish hasn't got the function that we've developed here. So we're just going to publish that, and then that will push it up there. And again, this will take another couple of minutes. OK, and here we go. It says Publish Succeeded. So we can click on Open Site, and it's going to take us to our function app. And then if we go to slash API slash function one, so it's actually going to come back straight away with a 401 error, which means we're not authorized to see it. So what we have to do is we have to go to Azure. If I refresh this, this is our resource group. You'll see here it's created all the stuff it needs to run. We go into the function app itself and we go to app keys. Now, these are the secure keys that you need to basically authenticate yourself. This is at the application level itself. We can go into a specific function though. We go into functions and click on our function. And then it's got its own set of keys here. So we can narrow down that authentication level. We just want this key here, and we're going to copy that. And here in the URL, we're going to type question mark code equals, and then we're going to paste that key in. And there we go. That's calling our get request. And if I just do uh, and name equals Rowan, and there it is passing the variable in. So there we go. That's all there is to it. We've just created an Azure function app and published it all through Visual Studio. Easy. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hope to see you again soon.